Hello, welcome to the first video in our chapter seven series. Um, this is a pretty long chapter, so I'm gonna break it up into six smaller sections. Um, I think they have good kind of nice breaks. So you can do um, these little chunks of information at a time. So in this first video, it's just gonna be an overview, kind of an introduction to the nervous system, kind of its component parts, how it is structurally classified, how it is functionally classified. And then we're gonna take a look at what we call supporting cells before we move on into focusing on the neurons, which are the major cells of your nervous system. All right, so when we think of the nervous system, it is really um, kind of three major processes. So we have sensory input. So this is everything coming in from all your different kinds of senses. So they're showing an eyeball here. So vision, hearing, taste, smell, equilibrium, touch, temperature, all of those senses that you kind of take in the world with. So that's your sensory input comes in via certain parts, which we're going to talk about a little, in a little bit. And then your brain and your spinal cord processes that information. Um, it, they call it integration. It's processing. It's making sense of what's happening. And then it will make decisions on if we need to do anything with that information. And this is what we call motor output. So here they're showing you a leg muscle as the effector. This is the thing that's going to do the stuff. Um, but that could be a smooth muscle, or it could be cardiac muscle, or it could be a gland, like secreting sweat or a hormone. So this motor output could go to various different types of targets. So that's basically the nervous system. If it was that easy, then we'd be done. Um, there's a lot more detail to it than that. Um, but think sensory input. You're receiving information from a world around us. We're processing it, integrating that, and then making decisions consciously and subconsciously what to do with that information and then sending out those commands to things in your body that can do stuff and that's what we call effectors all right so the structural classification we're going to be and these are going to be separate videos when i get to these points um, we have what's called the central nervous system which is your brain and spinal cord and that's it so brain and spinal cord is the cns or central nervous system and then everything else all the nerves that are branching off of your brain all the nerves that are branching off of your spinal cord any of the receptors that are out there off of your brain and spinal cord um, this is considered part of the peripheral nervous system, or PNS. Okay. So then functional classification, and we can have these different functions in both the central and peripheral nervous system. So remember, we have all that sensory input coming in. So this is what we call the afferent division. So that's this half right here. Okay. So sensory or afferent. Afferent is a word that means bringing to or like brings in. So that's what afferent means. So we have um, a couple words that we are going to be getting comfortable with, that afferent and efferent. But we also have these terms here, somatic and visceral. Okay? Somatic means um, we are aware of it. It's going, it's going to our conscious thoughts and conscious processes. So this is, as sensory information is coming in, this is what you are consciously aware of so touch and taste and smell and sound and all that kind of stuff um, that's somatic sensory but if you think about it there are some other types of sensations that are happening in your body that you are unaware of and these are what's called visceral so these are things like the stretching of your stomach or the ph of your blood or the oxygen concentrations of your blood or stretching of your intestinal wall you don't you're not aware of those things, but that's still sensory information that's being recognized and sent to your central nervous system, okay? The other division is called efferent pathways. There's that word efferent. This means going away, okay? So we have afferent with the letter A. Afferent brings in efferent means going away think of effector like muscles or effectors they are the receivers of this efferent information so again we have that somatic word again somatic in this case since it's dealing with um, action this is kind of motor commands so somatic motor these are the voluntary things that you can do and the only effector that you can consciously control are skeletal muscle 
That's it. You have no conscious control over smooth muscle. You have no conscious control over cardiac muscle. You have no conscious control over glands. They're running on autopilot. So somatic motor, that's the only thing that you have conscious control over as far as these motor commands. The other category is called autonomic motor, which sometimes is called visceral motor, just like we had visceral sensory, we can have visceral motor. They're pretty interchangeable. So this is what's called your involuntary system. So these are commands that are being sent out that you can't control, which is good because we wouldn't want to have to consciously think about when to beat our heart or when to take a breath or when to you know, release buffer to maintain our blood's pH. So all of these things that are happening autonomically um, or kind of involuntarily, they are going to be controlled mainly uh, or will be controlling mainly your smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and glands. There's going to be the very last part of this chapter called the autonomic nervous system, the ANS. We'll go into more detail um, with this autonomic control, right? So our structural classification was central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Functional classification is an afferent, bringing information in, then we process it, and then we send out our efferent commands with both somatic and visceral or autonomic pathways. Okay. So now we're going to wrap up this video just taking a look at supporting cells that are found in the CNS. So this is going to be, these are cells that are going to be found in your brain and spinal cord. So what's shown here um, is the neuron, which is the whole next video is going to be all about the neuron. So we're not going to talk about them, but I want to highlight them. They're kind of the yellowy brown cells. They look like big octopus. Um, so these supporting cells found in the brain and spinal cord, um, I'll just briefly go through them. They're just listed here in your notes. Okay. So the first one I'll say is astrocytes. Okay, so astrocytes are right here. These are these green looking, they almost look like a sea anemone. Um, so astrocytes are re responsible for a lot of things. They help to maintain the blood brain barrier, which we'll talk about a little bit later. They help to structurally hold up and support neurons. Um, let's see. Star-shaped cells account for nearly half the neural tissue. They brace and support the neurons and help to connect them to capillaries, not to transmit the blood, but they actually prevent things from coming out of the blood. They're very specialized, like guard, um, guards at the gate to make sure only the good stuff comes out of the blood. Okay. The next one on the list are the microglia. These little um, light blue guys up here. They're kind of pokey looking. Microglia, you can think of them as the cleanup crew, the recyclers, the phagocytes. So microglia are responsible for kind of just roaming around and cleaning up any cell debris or any waste products that are building up in the brain. Um, next, we have our ependymal cells. So ependymal cells are most like what we know as epithelial lining. So they line these open spaces in the um, central nervous system. So you can't really see it here. I'll write it over here. This is um, what are called ventricles. Ventricles are open spaces. They're fluid-filled spaces within the brain and spinal cord. So it's those open spaces that are lined by ependymal cells. They're ciliated, so they help to set up a current, allowing your cerebrospinal fluid to circulate through your brain and spinal cord. And then lastly, we have oligodendrocytes. A nice big long word. Oligodendrocytes are what um, your neurons have to um, what's the word I'm looking for? Insulate, right? So they surround the axons, the long skinny part of a neuron, again, which we'll talk about in the next video. So here we have what's called a myelinated axon. So you, if you have the axon, which is a long extension of your neuron, and then wrapping around that is all these layers of these extensions of the oligodendrocytes that create a protective sheath around that axon. It insulates it, it allows for the action potentials, these nerve impulses to travel along the axon very, very quickly. Um, so that collection of all of these oligodendrocyte wrappings is what we call myelination. We're gonna see that also in the peripheral nervous system with um, some cells called Schwann cells. They do the same thing, they're just found in different places, so of course they have to have different names. So oligodendrocytes in the CNS, and we're going to see Schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system. All right, so that's the end, just this introductory video. I will see you next time for taking a look at neuron anatomy. All right, bye.